travel around the world We travel meant and seeing places Meeting people, exploring all the world Having a good time with travel man down Make sure you see every bit of it Yeehaw! Hey everybody, how's it going? Travel Man Dan here. Hope you're having a good afternoon so far. We have an amazing episode ahead of us. As today, I'm going to check out the Gene Autry Museum of the American West. So, got my globe here. Even though it's on the other side of town here in Los Angeles, it's always faster and better to travel magic globe. So sit back, relax, and get ready for an awesome show. We made it guys. We're out here at the Gene Autry Museum of the American West and today's episode is going to be fantastic. Thank you Magic Globe. Hey if you're new to the channel and you haven't already be sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button right there. Ring the notifications bell so you're notified when new episodes come out each and every week and wow we have one slamming episode to go today. I'm out here well in Griffith Park just across the LA Zoo at this behemoth museum 36,000 square feet of over 500,000 pieces of art and artifacts from the American frontier so sit back relax and let's go check it out the Autry was established and co-founded in 1988 as Gene Autry Western Heritage Museum by actor singer businessman Gene Autry his wife Jackie and Joanne and Monty Hall it was intended to explore and share the collective story of the American West and its diverse cultures and give you a small remembrance of its significance. All right, here we are about to go inside the museum. But before we go inside, I want to go ahead and talk a little bit about their mission statement. The mission statement is this. The Autry brings together all peoples of the American West, connecting the past with the present to inspire shared cultures. All right, one thing to keep in mind is uh, we're rearing in on the end of COVID, hopefully. You still have to wear a mask in the museum. Not a big deal. All right, so we walk in and take a look at this little foyer. All kinds of good stuff going on in here. We're going to go into each little section of the museum. I'll give you a good look at it. But you can see they have this wonderful courtyard. Hey, you can never be too protected. Take a look. We have Gene with a mask on and his horse has two masks on. <laughs> I bet you Fauci would be real happy about that. With the opening of the museum in 1988, Gene Autry realized he accomplished his dream to build a museum which would exhibit and interpret the heritage of the West and show how it influenced America and the world. Wells Fargo Theater, unfortunately it's not open. Uh, hopefully within the next several months it should be open and you can go ahead and you can see really cool like Native American films and stuff that pertains to the American West. Hell, I don't know, maybe they even show some cool Gene Autry stuff. Okay, so admission is $14 for adults, it's $12.50 if you're a AAA carrier, $10 for seniors, and $6 for children. And right to the left, you have the George Montgomery Gallery. Right here, pay attention to the sign. It says, please, no food, beverages, photography, or video. So I'm unfortunately not gonna be able to go and film in there. So if you get a chance to check it out, be sure you gotta be here. I can't take the camera in there because of the sensitivity to some of the paintings and things like this. Um, but yeah, some unbelievable artists, um, some unbelievable artwork, and uh, really puts you in the mood to get in this museum. So if you get a chance, check it out. This is Alan Hauser's The Future. Ted and Marion Craver Imagination Gallery and unfortunately it is closed today because they're doing some renovations and restorations. Now this was the part that I really wanted to show you because as an actor, as a guy who loves old west films, uh, cowboys and Indians type stuff, uh, inside there is a lot of Gene Autry movie memorabilia and people that have been a part of the culture and history of movie making and old western movies. Unfortunately, it's not open today. All right, so I'm walking down the first corridor, which is really cool. Let's take a look down here, down below. As we can see, look at this giant mural that stretches around that bottom part, okay? Depicting all the different people from the West, uh, whether it be from movies or whether they're an iconic historic figure. We're gonna go down there in a little bit and take a better, closer look at it. 
Fritz Skolder was already known for his large abstract paintings that critiqued native stereotypes when he painted this homage to Western movie star and Autry Museum co-founder Monty Hal. Take a look at this saddle. I mean, look at this thing. It's uh, quite primitive looking, but the detail on this thing is extraordinary. If we look down here at the footholds, all these tiny little beads that are making up this beautiful design. And then we go over here, this front part also has the same detail. Really kind of cool. Uh, it's quite basic and probably looks like it would hurt to sit on for a long time. Kent Monkman creates large-scale paintings in the genre known as history painting, grand dramatic narratives of national identity, origin, and pride to critique the myths on which these same histories rest. He says, my work challenges history, or rather, dominant versions of history. Wow, take a look behind me. Check out this one. This one is called Tolkien's Gold and Glory, and well, you can see there's something going on there. All right, behind me, you're gonna see some type of variation of a totem pole, it's called a house pole. Check it out, it's beautiful. It's got some amazing carvings going on. You can see the faces going on there. And there is two of them here. We'll go ahead and take a look at that one over there. House posts are a variety of totem pole, an elaborately carved vertical sculpture of symbolic representations of animals and spirit beings. Take a look at this beautiful painting behind me of the Virgin de Guadalupe. In Hispanic and Chicano culture, customized cars called lowriders have special meaning. Designed to cruise low and slow, lowriders sport spectacular paint jobs and handcrafted interiors. This one is amazing. This art piece was done by Jose Benjamin Lopez. This monumental crystal uses the natural twists and knots of the wood. Prior to his acquisition by the Autry, it was displayed in the artist's front yard. Wow, take a look at this one. All these crazy little pieces of pottery that are stitched into this canvas really gives it a really eclectic look. It's just very interesting to look at. Uh, if you can see, each one is made differently. It's out of a small piece of pottery, and it's quite interesting. Let me get a little closer and show you what exactly is going on up close. Once you get to this section of the museum, make sure you take a look at all these paintings. They are unbelievably amazing. I mean, you take a look at some of the detail on these things. You can't believe somebody painted this thing. It looks like a photograph. This gigantic painting right here, this is kind of the centerpiece of this wall. And if we take a look at it, I mean, what an epic valley. What an amazing thing. You got the river running down on it. But I want to point something out. If we get closer to it, up at the top of the mountain, it almost looks like a cross, the way that the water is cut out through the rock. Just really an ama amazing imagination through the artist's inner imagery and, well, what a beautiful painting to have in a museum. Being from Western New York and being a diehard Buffalo Bills fan, boy, I would love to have those two chairs as my football Sunday seating chair for the game. Frederick Remington's sculpture, Rattlesnake, shows a horse and rider reacting together to an unexpected encounter with a venomous snake. Look at this beautiful Indian Roadmaster. Wow. What an amazing motorcycle. I'd just like to take that for a ride, Trevor Mandan. I really like this picture to my left here because growing up very close to Niagara Falls, I often wondered what Native Americans thought of this giant, beautiful waterfall. And in this picture, you can see they're kind of looking down to it, uh, feeling the majestic powers of it, and just on looking at the supremacy that this water raging through the canyons would bring. Okay, now if you keep walking around in this top part, you'll come to the Norman F. Sprang Junior Gallery. Unfortunately, it is closed right now. All right, so you start your descent down to the lower level. Be sure to check out this painting on the stairway. It is fascinating. Take a look at this painting behind me. This thing is awesome. We have, well, start off from this side. 
see a bunch of people you may or may not recognize but as we whip around it's just completely painted all along this bottom half of the museum and there's just all kinds of great stuff going on there take a look at that i see a bunch of other stuff that i don't recognize i see some people that i recognize from old west movies overall i think they use this space to go ahead and have like conferences maybe speakers forums this kind of thing but just a really cool place and uh, down on this bottom half level is the level that i'm most excited about because as an actor i'm excited to go and see all the cool stuff from the western movies so let's go check it out all right there he is gene autry the singing cowboy check it out there's his hat a shirt, his guitar, looks like a piece of the Melody Ranch. Pretty cool. Melody Ranch was a place of Western spirit, companionship, stories, and music. Okay, now it's time to walk into the Samuel and Mita Grodin Gallery. Let's check it out. It's all about Griffith Park. And I love this right here where it says, what makes Griffith Park so special to you? Well. If you haven't seen my videos on Griffith Park, I'll go ahead and throw those up there right now. But I used to work in Griffith Park at the observatory and it's just one of the coolest places because there's so much stuff to do within the park. It's the largest city park in the United States at 53 square miles. And it's just a beautiful place. If you've never been there, you have the observatory, you have the zoo, you have this museum, you have Travel Town. You just have a lot of cool, fun things at Griffith Park. And I think it's cool that they have this section right here in the museum that commemorates Griffith Park. Let's take a closer look. And then look at this thing. This is a pretty neat little invention. It's um, kind of like a 3D art installation of all the things that you can do. You can see people over here horseback riding. You can see uh, tree climbing and people are out there hiking. Let's take a look on the floor. They see this right here. This is a map. It's kind of like a shoots and ladder game of P-22. If you don't know what P-22 is, it's a mountain lion that was captured in Griffith Park that the rangers go ahead and they keep track of because of its collar. You can actually find spots where they watch P-22 throughout the night um, if he walks in front of a camera. And uh, it's pretty cool that you have this right here. <laughs> you were born in the western Santa Monica Mountains. Show us your cutest cub face. <laughs> all right, before we step into the section of Gene Autry and all his accolades and friends and things that went on in the movie business, let me go ahead and drop some knowledge on you. Orvin Grover Gene Autry was often referred to as the singing cowboy. He was born on September 29th, 1907 in Tioga, Texas, and lived to be 91 years old when he passed away on October 2nd, 1998. Now, Gene Autry is one special man. He is the only entertainer to have five stars on Hollywood's Walk of Fame. One for radio, records, film, television, and live theatrical performance. Wow, can you imagine? Travel Man Dan is just trying to get one. That guy had five. Amazing job, Gene. That's why you go down as one of the greatest entertainers ever. Gene Autry began his radio career in 1928 and made his first recordings a year later. His first hit came in 1931 with That Silver Haired Daddy of Mine, the first record ever certified gold for having sold more than one million copies. Oh man, that is an amazing accomplishment. I can't believe that. And uh, Silver Haired Daddy of Mine sounds a lot like my dad. In 1940, the theater exhibitors voted Autry the fourth biggest box office draw behind Mickey Rooney, Clark Gable, and Spencer Tracy. Wow, that's amazing. What great company to be a part of. Now the last bit of knowledge I'm going to drop on you. Gene Autry's great love of baseball prompted him to purchase the American League's California Angels in 1961. They now called the Los Angeles Angels and they're an enemy of the New York Yankees. So. Although I love Gene Autry and his love for baseball, I can't say I like the Angels because I'm a diehard Yankee fan. But great job, Gene. This is a cool section called Becoming West. These galleries tell the dramatic story of the West in the 19th century, a time of rapid transformation when both the West and the American nation were fundamentally remade. Hey, hey, hey. look at that. Some kind of Printing ink press. You have your Pony Express saddle. 
Take a look at that Smith and Wesson Schofield revolver, nickel and gold plated. Wow. Men's grooming is definitely on the upside. You can't find a haircut and a shave in LA for under 60 bucks. But take a look at those old instruments. Wow, take a look at this old Civil War uniform. The sword that went with it. All kinds of neat, interesting artifacts. Some sort of bicycle that has an extra wheel extended off of it that locks onto a railroad track. Right there we have a 38 caliber rifle. Check that guy out. Alright, as I continue to walk around, what the hell is this thing? Some kind of Willy Wonka steam thing. This is the old Silby steam pumper. It's like a fire engine. Check this thing out. It was used with the fire department. This little facade right here, as you know or may not know, uh, Chinese immigrants were a huge part of the development of the railroad and the growing American West. And as we take a look, we can see a lot of bit of artifacts going on in here, things that they may have brought over, pictures, kind of cool stuff, and uh, it's quite interesting. Look at the clothes that they wore. Obviously, very different than when they arrived, the people here, and just kind of cool things. You can see back in there, the tea kettle, okay? And you have the Chinese musical instruments. Over here, we have some type of Chinese uh, phone book, if you will. Really cool stuff. Look at this old-fashioned Kodak camera. Wow, take a look at that thing. Okay, today's a rest day, but if I was allowed inside, I might want to use those old workout dumbbells. Check those guys out. Oh, yes! Check this out, guys. This is awesome. I'm at an old-school saloon. Look at this thing. All right, authentic bottles. Okay, look at the beautiful bar this is. All right, oh, I wish I could do the weekly beer and video review show right here at this bar. Oh, this is just amazing. You have the carvings of the woman right up there. I feel like I'm in a saloon in 1860. And then we take a look over here. We have old school poker tables. Maybe there's a, a, a fight, a ruckus at the table, a dispute over money, if you will. It's just really cool. They got the piano going on over there. This room is really great. Look at that old whiskey barrel from 1894. Look at those old bottles. Oh. Look at that. That is one epic looking cash register. Look at this advertising tray from Anheuser-Busch going all the way back to 1895. Look how cool this stuff is. Now, I'm not much of a gambler um, because I, I don't have much money, but if I did, uh, take a look. You got those old school poker chips. It looks like they're made out of ivory. That is beautiful. You got all kinds of cards right here from the 1880s. And look at that roulette wheel, beautifully molded around there with wood. Just a, a great little scene here in the saloon area of the Old West. Because oftentimes when you see Old West movies and you go ahead and you watch a television show, things always go down in the saloon. Whether it's fisticuffs or a man falls in love with a woman or there's a, you know, big saloon drinking gay old time at the piano. It usually happens in the saloon and I'm glad that they have this section here in the museum. Now, it just wouldn't be right if we didn't shoot off some guns back in Old West. Um, like it, love it, or hate it, it happened. Beautiful, we have the Winchesters, the lever action repeating rifle. Check those guys out. There it is guys, an advertisement for the Winchester repeating rifle. Two shots a second. Remember Jack Nicholson and Batman? And check out all these old school revolvers. Beautiful. M. Hartley Company. There is the 1313 and 1315. Beautiful little gun. But look at the detail on these things. Take a look at this Colt double action right there. It's got engraved all over the barrel. There's the Colt 50 revolver. 
This section is really cool because, well, it shows the old ancient West law enforcement. As you can see, you see all the different stars over here. And back over here, you can see like what a marshal would wear, what he would have for handcuffs over here, the pistols that he might have. And um, well, I have hopes and aspirations of continuing my career as an actor. And hopefully one day I'll be able to grow the mustache back and go ahead and create an awesome Western film where maybe I play um, the bad guy, but most likely I'll probably play one of the sheriffs to wear these stars. But just really cool. I love this, love this little area. All right, as we take a look over here, we have Billy the Kid's infamous gun right here. Now here is one vicious gun. Check it out. This is the Gatling gun. Guns, guns, guns. Get your guns right here. You'll find all your favorite guns, your rifles, your revolvers, your shotguns right here in this room. Guns, guns, guns. Come and get some guns. Check out this little display right here. You can see James Butler Hitchcock, otherwise known as Wild Bill. You can see his pistol. Talks a little bit about his card playing days. It's pretty interesting. Take a look. We can see right there. There is a picture of Wild Bill. Right there's a pretty cool looking thing. Shows all the neat little saddles and the spurs. Look at this crazy looking contraption. This is called a chuck wagon. And it's a modified wagon used to carry cooking supplies. Look at this thing, can you imagine this thing? Right there, this box held important cooking supplies, valuables, and hinged lid folded out into the table. As you can see, this thing drops down and you got yourself a little table. Check that out, it's got little drawers on it for coffee, dried fruit, beans and rice, lard. Okay, another cool part of this museum is it's got a little outdoor area. Check this out, okay? We have uh, waterfalls and rocks and little ponds and stuff. And if you just need to get out of the museum, not that it's overly popular today, um, it's not super stuffy, but if you just wanna get out, you wanna get yourself in the fresh air, all right, you can feel it, you can hear that. And uh, well, it's a nice place to be and enjoy yourself and get a little bit of fresh air, check it out. Well, that's gonna do it for us today. I hope you had a good time, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you haven't already, be sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button, ring the notifications bell, give me a like on this video, drop me down a comment below, let me know what you thought of it. Wow, what an amazing museum. I hope you saw something fun and cool, like all the different artifacts and art pieces going on in here. I hope you learned something new about the American West and all the interesting things that went on to develop to where we are now. But most of all, I hope you were inspired to come here to the Gene Autry Museum of the American West yourself. I guarantee you're gonna love it. I'm Travel Man Dan, and remember, it's a big world out there. Make sure you see every bit of it.